Relatives of the deceased stood for hours in long lines, first to view the photographs of their loved ones and then to identify the bodies in the morgue. This woman, who identified herself as Madri from Tivoli Gardens, told us that both of her sons, 17-year-old Fernando Grant and 21-year-old Fabian, she alleges they were executed by the security forces in her presence. So feeling so bad. He came to my house and took my two sons. I said, "Shall my 17-year-old son and kill him?" He was they, they take him across the road and put him to the needle and then kill him across. I saw the 17-year-old. They, they put him to the needle and some water. They were saying, "Mommy, mommy," and I tried to came out. Those sentiments were shared by scores of others as they viewed dozens of pictures to find their loved ones killed during the excursion. As time progressed, the lines got longer and public defender Earl Witter was hard at work. Mr. Witter said profiles have been created for the bodies and relatives have been asked to provide pictures, biographical and other information to make the identification easier. However, he could not say how long this process would take. It is not easy to introduce brand new systems in our country at the best of times. So obviously there will be teething pains. But I have seen the arrangements that are being um, practiced. And hopefully it will get less tedious as you put it. And... Uh, less uncomfortable for those who have come. We learned that persons from as far as Manchester, St. Thomas, Westmoreland and Clarendon were at the community centre to get information about their loved ones. At one point, it was too much for this woman who identified both of her relatives in the album. Then, it was Madri. Reality set in as she gazed on the pictures of her two sons. Jesus, in the strength, in the strength. We have to stand up strong for my three twin daughters. We don't have anybody around me because my two brothers then are afraid. Children's advocate Mary Clark had her concerns. Me, my brother-in-law was killed also. I know their pain. And I can only hope that one day justice will be served for all the innocent who died. And for those relatives who have identified their family members, they now question where will they get the money to bury them. Reporting from Tivoli Gardens, I am Delona Fleming for CBN News. Vendors who were displaced by last week's fire at the Coronation Market in downtown Kingston could be back in business at their regular location as early as tomorrow. Here's some insight as to the extent of the damage and the immediate plans to restore the market. This was the scene at the Coronation Market when our new team visited Monday. Scattered produce, broken down stalls, angry vendors and tears. The highly popular hub of economic activity for vendors and farmers all across Jamaica has had to close its doors. A casualty of last week's unrest in downtown Kingston. I'm boy, I don't know what to tell you right now, yo. It's a more than a, a strategy, yo. This is a section of the market that was gutted by fire. This refrigerator and its contents did not survive the blaze. A fire still lingers under this pile of onions. Vendors say it cost about $3,000 a bag. So I'm not really want to tell in a line. I'm not putting a line of this or this on my life. My life, load, this is everything for me. So I don't want to tell a lie. Roughly $800,000 worth of stuff I lose. I'm not really lost no money in the fire still in the boat. I lost my goods. Eh? What the market done today? Them come and light the market on fire. Eh? What them want to set up a fucking walk on teeth now? Eh? Look at the market. Look there. How we going to manage? We want people much money. How much millions of dollars what a load we take from people. We want to get money from the people for all these goods now where they burn up. The mayor says it won't be business as usual, but efforts are being made to have the market reopened by Thursday. By Thursday, we will be able to start accommodating back the vendors in Carnation Market. Probably not in the, in the same condition that, that they were used to. But um, at least it would be a much better environment. He's advising persons who had relocated to the Three Miles area to return by Thursday as well. Insurance agents were scheduled to visit the market this week to do their assessments of the damage. The market department is gathering the names and the Ministry of Social Security is coming in to work with us now to fast track that process to see how quickly we can get some temporary relief to those persons that were affected. 
As for a long-term solution, though, Mr. McKenzie said the KCC is seeking to fast-track its partnership with telecommunications company Digicel, which had announced plans to refurbish the market. Dwayne Burbick, CBM News. Both political parties are reviewing their stocks in light of the court ruling, which could leave Northeast St. Anne without a representative in Parliament. CVM News sought reactions to the news that JLP MP Shaheeni Robinson could lose her seat. Here is Dara Smith. Since the 2007 general elections, there have been three by-elections due to dual citizenship challenges brought by the opposition People's National Party all going in favor of the ruling Jamaica Labour Party. However, some analysts argue a by-election in Northeast St. Anne may not have the same outcome for the ruling party, given the recent pressure the Prime Minister has faced to resign over the Manat affair. For the PNB, Monday's court ruling could be viewed as a minor victory. As far as I'm concerned, the ruling was just um, the judge ruled in our favor. I have no further comment. Well, the constituents had a lot to say. For some, it's a time for change. We think it's a time come for Shiny go. for go now. Go. And replace Shiny with somebody else. Yeah. So if the Labour right can't win, they can't win. But them can't win this guy PMP time now. I think Shiny should step down. I think so. Why you say? She not she not deserving all cherries. We do a lot of we vote for Shiny in all cherries. As a breeders. And Shiny Robinson, she only give one breeders. Breading shop on the beach. So why should China stay in power? She should step down. However, it has long been the belief that Northeast Saint Anne is a safe seat for Shahini Robinson, since she gained control of the seat in a by-election in 2001. Those in support of the MP spoke of her presence in the constituency, pointing to Miss Robinson's efforts at infrastructural development. Despite the opinion that it may be challenging times for the MP to secure a victory, some constituents remain confident that should there be a by-election, Miss Robinson will be victorious. We need to look into that and see that what she has been doing, she has been doing an excellent work, and there's, if they send Tom, Dick and Ari, I don't think there will be nobody else fitting and suitable for this position in Northeastern St. Anna. I'm not happy with it at all. That woman is a very good woman at the area. Very, very good woman. Shiny Robinson is a very good woman. And I don't happy. There is also the view that now is not the time for yet another by-election, given the country's economic challenges. In the meantime, the nation awaits the decision of Justice Roy Jones on an application for a stay of the ruling from Ms. Robinson's legal team. Dara Smith, CVM News. Meanwhile, with the JLP moving to seek a stay of execution on the ruling to oust Mrs. Robinson, an attorney representing the PNP in the case is pouring cold water on the initiative. Abe Dabdu believes the move will prove futile. Been ignoring the case, um, not, not turning up in court sometimes. I, I would be surprised if the court would stay execution of a judgment that will allow an alien to continue to sit in the house. Mr. Dabdoub also declared that Ms. Robinson's legal team participated in setting the date for the pretrial review. At least one political analyst believes the situation is a good one for the nation, while others believe the JLP is to be blamed for placing itself in a challenging position. L diminishing his majority, he's only three now, there's going to be an election, with a by-election now. It gives me give more impetus, so he has to follow those promises about, because how I see it now, it's a simple equation for Mr. Golding, you know. Follow your promises, whatever, whatever it really plays out, um, you know, follow all the promises you made, the public will rally to you. Don't follow them, and you might as well take yourself away. That all persons in that situation should have declared and we clean up the mess once and for all. I don't know about the legal technicalities which may let um, Shahini Robinson off her case. But clearly, if it falls in the pattern that we have seen for the previous three cases, then the results would have been a foregone conclusion. Uh, having this appear now as a crisis on the horizon seemed to me to be a little careless on the part of the government. Prime Minister Bruce Golding narrowly escaped the opposition's no-confidence motion in Parliament yesterday. When the vote was tallied, it was a division along party lines of 30 to 28 in the Prime Minister's favour. 
In his presentation preceding the vote, Mr. Golding defended his decisions, but also apologized to Parliament. Kalila Enriquez has more. The vote came after Mr. Golding extended his public apology to the Parliament. In a 